Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, and thank you for inviting me. Um, first of all, just to say that I won't be doing a presentation. Secondly, uh, I will be talking through things and where we've come from, what we're trying to do. Um, I'm here uh, speaking on behalf of the Mental Health in Cybersecurity Foundation, which I helped set up at the end of last year. Um, the first thing to clarify, I guess, is that I'm not from um, a consistent mental health background. I am a cybersecurity professional. Uh, I did work in mental health way back in the 80s for a couple of years. Um, and I was a management consultant for a while. Then I worked in technology as a um, project manager in development projects, so, so software development. And that was before I moved into cybersecurity, where I've been for 20 three years-ish. Um, and the sort of roles I have had, I'm, I'm currently a Chief Technology Officer, I've been an Information Security Officer and a consultant in the field. Uh, so with all that, that, that sort of background, what am I doing talking about mental health and cyber security? So let me tell you a story as, as to how it started and what we're trying to do. Um, I, I chair many events and about a year and a half ago, back in October 2022, I was chairing a two day event, which was um, mainly security managers and CISOs. And the topic was around stress and burnout and, and mental health. And this was just after, so it's October 2022, uh, the Uber incident or, or as, as, as I like to say, when Uber threw their seats uh, in front of the bus. Uh, so we were talking about what is happening in our industry and the impact it's having on us. And we talked about the fact that over the last 20 years, we've seen um, going from what was then uh, BSI uh, 5577 to now um, ISO 27001, the range of standards that we've had uh, that's increased the range of um, regulations that, that have increased, the range of types of attacks that have increased, the number of attacks that have increased, the number of threat actors out there, uh, the number of, um, I, I guess, individuals involved in the underground economy and all of these sorts of things um, out there. But also at our end, um, our skill pool around cyber has not increased in the way that it needs to increase. We've had a skill shortage in this uh, in our industry for many, many years. So we were talking about all this and uh, we're at the end of the session, because again, like the previous session, Jeff said we could talk about uh, AI for a long time. We felt we could have talked about it for a long time. So I said at the end of that session, um, is there any, I, I can feel that there's a lot of um, thought behind this, a lot of emotion uh, around this topic, would anyone like to help me write it up? So two hands went up. Uh, those two people and myself met up a couple of times and it's about this time last year where we got to the realization that we couldn't find enough research out there that could correlate cybersecurity to stress, burnout and or mental health. There was um, a couple of research uh, projects that had been done where um, people said that they felt stressed, but what, what we were coming up with is, is, is probably, um, in our mind, we were thinking that academics would probably look at this research and say, well, that's not academic research. It's just a survey done with people who volunteered their thoughts. And if, if, if you're interested in research like that, you're probably going to contribute it, to it. So the numbers are skewed towards people saying that they've been affected, that they are stressed, that they've got, um, you know, burnout because they're the sort of people who are going to respond to this sort of a survey. So, so we couldn't find any correlation directly, but the paper that we produced, we released in May last year, it was during Mental Health Awareness Week, but we did collate lots of antidotal uh, data, which we presented in that paper, but also we, we because there was research that was lacking, we put together two pages of research that we thought needed to be done around this topic, uh, that we thought was important. Um, and so we put that paper, we released it in, in May last year. We'd already started uh, conversations with uh, InfoSec, um, which takes place in June each year. And we put together a panel, which included uh, the CEO from CISEC. So that's the, um, I can't remember the acronym anymore. I think it's a Chartered Inform 
Institute for Information Security uh, is what it stands for. It used to be professionals as well, but CISEC stands for Chartered Institute for Information Security. Um, also, we started to speak to um, the UK Cybersecurity Council. Through my connections, I had been involved in the formation project uh, as, as I've led the thought leadership work stream in the formation project. So I started to speak to them. Um, in, in InfoSec, we, we managed to get, as I said, um, Amanda Finch from CISEC. We got uh, one of the um, peer reviewers involved uh, as well. And actually two peer reviewers. One was Tom Langford. The other was Jane Franklin. Um, and also one of the uh, authors of the paper, apart from myself, I chaired the panel. And it was quite surprising that um, we had a lot of interest at that event for each of the panelists, including myself, they had to move us off to bring the next speaker on, which was 15 minutes later, because we had a lot of people interested um, in finding out more. And that wasn't just individual individuals themselves. It was each one of us that was on the panel and myself as chair. So everyone had people that they uh, that were interested in what each one of us had said and contributed. And I hadn't seen that in a panel for a long, long time. So we went to the back, carried on talking to people, spoke at other panels. So by September last year, we decided that um, we felt that there was enough interest out there that we should set up a foundation to explore this even further. And um, we've had other panels since then on uh, other events. Um, one of them was in, in, in December where someone spoke about their mental health experiences as Tom did at the InfoSec panel. Uh, Tom in the InfoSec panel talked about how because of the stresses of what he went through in his role, he ended up taking to drink and tried to commit suicide. And Mark, who spoke at the um, December panel, talked about how the culture within his organisation was a very macho culture, which was that if anything goes wrong on your watch, it's your fault. And he was made because of the culture to feel that it was his fault. And uh, because of that, he tried to commit suicide. Unfortunately, uh, his family saved him from that. And he talked about his experiences. So these are some of the things that we'd, we'd come across uh, when we set the foundation up. And um, we started to have open calls back in uh, November time, and we've had open calls each month. So we've started to put together a community of practice, which we have monthly calls for, and we are setting up a research um, group as well to, to take what we had as ideas for research into real research that takes place. We're speaking to um, a couple of the um, universities that are centers of excellence for research to take that research forward. Also in, in sort of marking the year from when we released our paper last year, we are working on updating that paper. What other additional research has been done? The events that we've spoken at, uh, what's been going on in the industry and so on, um, and the changes that have happened in, in a year. But also we're putting together some videos which we're going to release in Mental Health Awareness Week which are from CISOs and other people around cyber security that have experienced issues and, and for them to tell their stories. They normally stress and wellness in an enterprise uh, from the what, what HR do for everyone as part of the operator is if 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 I'm working at reception or I'm a security guard or I'm a uh, I don't know uh, I work in finance or marketing if I have any of these issues it is a wellness issue and it's a wellness issue for HR to deal with however and how I perform and how I perform will impact the cybersecurity team and the cybersecurity team is responsible for the cyber resilience of an organization and if you look at the um, cyber resilience strategies around the world from governments every single government cybersecurity uh, cyber resilience strategy relies on the cyber resilience of its enterprises 
And the cyber resilience of an enterprise relies on the cyber resilience of its cyber team. And that is why we like to separate it and why we think it's an issue that shouldn't be a wellness issue, but a cyber resilience issue. And, and from that perspective, we are speaking to a lot of people. We're getting a lot of traction. Uh, we've, we've put together a charter. Um, I, I will share that charter with you briefly, just so that you get an idea to see what, what, what it is uh, that, that we are saying. Um, will I be able to share this, Jeff? Uh, I don't want to share screen. I just want to share the charter. Um, you want to just put a link to it in the chat? Oh, no, I will be able to share it. It's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll or share, share screen, that. whichever you prefer. Yep. Okay. There we go. So this is a dummy one. This is an example. So it's to the company I work for, virtually informed, uh, has agreed to. As an organization, we recognize, and this is quite important, and you'll see in there the delivery of sustained, effective cybersecurity of an organization relies in part on the resilience of its cybersecurity teams and leaders. The cybersecurity teams operate in a relentless high pressure environment. Stress, burnout, and deterioration, deteriorating mental health of cybersecurity professionals is a real threat to the cybersecurity industry and the organization they serve. Investing in effective management of mental health, uh, sorry, mental well being cyber, within cybersecurity teams help address this threat. In response, uh, we promote our signatory to the, the uh, to key stakeholders, raise awareness foster an environment of understanding, openness, and transparency for all staff experiencing stress, burnout, or becoming and or have become uh, mentally unwell. Monitor practices that lead to stress, burnout, and so on, and then we pledge to. And this is an example. Uh, different organizations can pledge to different things. Uh, and, and that's an example that, that someone might, might share. And really what, what we're trying to do, this, this first level of this charter, is about raising awareness. And that's all we're trying to do, raise awareness. We're not trying to force organizations to commit to making changes immediately, although that would be nice. Um, and, and what we're trying to do is at the moment within this phase that we're at is we're trying to, um, within the next month, we are going to have a launch event. And the first 30 organizations that sign up to the charter um, we'll be at the launch event, we'll invite them and we'll give them a framed uh, version of the charter that they've signed up to. Um, and, and the different types of organisations are what we are finding that we're representing and trying to represent in this first, first version, which is basically um, not just, we have got some enterprises. So one of the founders uh, is, is from um, Admiral Insurance and they do some work around uh, you know, with their cyber teams around around, around uh, mental health. So, so we've got organizations like that who are end users or, 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 or of, of cyber security. Also, we've got uh, bodies like uh, CISEC that are interested. Um, also, Tech UK, they're going to sign up to it. They're going to host the event that we have. So we've got industry bodies. Then we've also got um, event organizations like um, Foundry, uh, they are hosting us in May for some workshops that we're doing. Also, uh, other event organizations. Also, we've got um, uh, recruiters that specialize in cyber that are talking about this and, and are signing up to it. And for example, they, their pledges are totally different, but you can see where within the pledges, when we're talking about creating transparency for our industry and our profession around um, th th this topic, because what when we first had that conversation with with one of the recruiters um it, it, what what we talked about was the fact that we we're finding that that CISOs are staying in their roles for maybe um 24 months that's two years so they go from one role to another role and we don't know if they're going out the fire fr frying pan and into the fire uh, type role and partly if that is happening is that we are in a situation where we are creating um an environment where people cannot be honest that they are being stressed with the work that their that, 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 that their organization is exposing them to and they're working you know 40 50 60 70 80 hours a day and 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 that is wrong for the industry and what we need to do is create an environment where people can be honest they can be tra transparent that if they're leaving a role because they're stressed when they go into another role, you need to be honest to your recruiter and say, do you know what? I'm leaving because I'm stressed. I'd like to be going into a role 
where you have already worked out for me i'm not going to be more stressed than i have been um and and hopefully that that, that, that the organization i'm going into is going to be aware that i have come from a stressful role and that i have been working 80 hours a week and i'm not looking for you know jumping out this role into that one so what we're looking for is is, is working towards um, the future where we can be honest about the hours that we've been working, we can be honest about instant response teams where they're working, there's a team of three or a team of five or 15, however many they are, but they've been working in, in, in a way that they, they are just being battered continuously. Now, I understand that not every team within cyber works in within that high pressured um, sort of conditions. However, we do need to start looking at what we're doing to the teams especially the fact that we are um, the resource pool is small and if we're not careful it's going to get smaller because the advert that we're presenting out there to the world is that we are continuously stressed and we're moving on because you know we're burning out very very quickly um, i will give people links and i will um, ensure that that jeff has got uh, uh, my my details so if anyone is interested in signing up to the charter and all we're really asking for people to do at this stage is, and the example I gave is that, you know, if, if, if you don't work in cyber, but you do something with a cyber audience, look at it, see what you can do. Event organizations have said that um, we, 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 we have events for cyber security professionals. We will make sure that we raise the issue by having panels, by inviting speakers to talk about it. Um, recruiters are doing what they can do. Others are doing what they can do. And in terms of industry bodies, we're just getting them to just say that we will consider the issue in our committees, in our working groups, um, and we will try and make sure that we're not making things worse for cybersecurity professionals. So if you're not um, a CISO, if you don't work in instant response, if you work in somewhere else, but you have a cyber audience, there is a role that for you to play is what we're trying to say, because collectively is how we're going to change the industry and the profession and those uh, that, that are being uh, impacted. It's not uh, every it's, it's not a case of one person's going to change it or one organization is going to change it. We collectively need to take that responsibility to raise the issues and, and look to see what we can do.